Hey guys, your friend Spencer. I'm here with Brother Bill, and we are in Frankfort, Kentucky. And we're not here to see Daniel Boone's grave. We're here to see another famous American's grave that nobody knows about. Uh, Brother Bill, who is that we're here to see today? We're here to see John Gano's grave. Uh, he was uh, a chaplain for the Re in the Revolutionary War. Okay. And what is so significant about this John Gano? What was his deal? Well, he was a uh, an early Baptist preacher. He was saved in the early 1700s, mm -hmm. and uh, then during the Revolutionary War, he preached in favor of the war and was involved in that. And uh, I mean, you mean to tell me a, a Baptist preacher was in favor of the war? I oh. thought we weren't supposed to do war. <laughs> The revolution was a Baptist war. <laughs> <laughs> See, people don't know this stuff, folks. This is uh, this is amazing how, uh, when you go back and look at history, how, man, Baptist people were always somehow in the mix of, of shaping the country of America. So what, what was the one thing that John Gano was famous for? Well, actually, I don't know if you'd call it famous because uh, mm -hmm. hardly anyone knows about it. Yeah, you're right. Is, uh, you're right. <laughs> he was the one who, uh, when George Washington uh, believed on Jesus Christ and trusted him as Savior and asked to be baptized, John Gano was the one who baptized him. Amen. He, and he baptized him by immersion. And, yes. uh, and George Washington actually claimed to be a born-again Christian later, later in his life. Not, of course, not early in his life, but uh, he did claim to be a born-again Christian and identified with Christ in baptism by immersion. And John Gano, the Baptist preacher, hit one of his chaplains, really, yes. uh, baptized him in the river. And so pretty neat little bit of history there. Yes, absolutely. So what else do you know about him? Well, uh, he was a uh, preacher, like I said, during the Revolutionary War period, and mm -hmm. following that, he pastored four different churches uh, mm -hmm. in New Jersey, North Carolina, finally in Kentucky. Uh, there was one in New York City as well in between there. Wow. And um, uh, he was known for, he, when he first got saved, it was not under a uh, Baptist preacher, mm -hmm. and he went to the church that his father went to, which was a Presbyterian church, and mm. uh, asked to be baptized. And they said, oh, well, you were baptized as an infant. And mm. so that that's good enough. God will be pleased with that. Yeah. And then he started studying the scripture and that didn't seem right to him. And then he met a Baptist preacher who agreed to give him believers baptism. And, yeah. and that's how he became a Baptist preacher. Sure, sure. Well, see, a lot of folks don't realize, but the early Baptists used to believe that infant baptism was the mark of the beast. Yeah. And that, you, you know, people got expelled out of society if they, if they weren't part of that, if they weren't in, involved in that somehow. And so it really is a shame, but, uh, but we're, we're so glad that uh, the Baptist Historical Society has helped preserve some of this information for us, a lot of our Baptist heritage. And uh, of course, we don't believe Baptists are only going to heaven, but we do acknowledge the major contributions to the shaping of the United States of America. Yes. Uh, by Baptist people and, and some of the great contributions Baptist people have made in world evangelism and the work of Christ throughout the years. And so Frankfort, Kentucky here at the, uh, at the uh, Frankfort Cemetery graveyards here, uh, right across the way from the Capitol building right over there. We just had the Freedom Rally there. And uh, so glad to be here. We're going to show some videos of that. And uh, so pretty neat guy, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and if anyone wants to visit his grave, it's in the section of the cemetery that was established by the Daughters of the American Revolution mm -hmm. and it's an actual actually very small section in the cemetery so uh, mm -hmm. if you can find that his grave is easy to find it's yeah. just finding that area is yeah difficult. just just hit Daniel Boone is just right down here here's the cliff right here Daniel Boone's right down there and he you just go down the cliff a little ways and he's right there yep so pretty neat guy so we're gonna show you some footage of his grave so you can read the inscriptions on there and we thank you guys so very much for watching and if you uh, if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'd love to have you be a part of that and uh, looking forward to sharing some more information here in the future about the Baptist history of America that'd be great man a lot of good stuff so <laughs> God bless you friends we'll see you guys next time okay here's mr. Gano's grave and uh, here's also the grave of Mr. William Hickman, and uh, and they're buried here together as John and Sarah Gano. Uh, John was born in 1736 and died in 1804. And uh, th these are American heroes. These are heroes of the United States that nobody seems to know. And so this marker to John Gano says. Uh, after his conversion, he was baptized and united with the Baptist Church at Hopewell, his call to preach. The gospel came while he was plowing a field among the texts that took hold of his mind was, Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. He was ordained May 19, uh, 29, 1754 at Hopewell, and for 50 years plowed the eternal fields of the souls of men. As a minister of Christ, he shone like a star of the first magnitude in the American churches and moved in a wildfly extended field of action. 
He pastored four churches and during the American Revolution, it says there, during the American uh, Revolution, his services to his country were con uh, conspicuous. He entered the army as a chaplain to General Clinton, New York Brigade in the fierce conflict on Chatterton's Hill when he saw more than half the army flying from the sound of cannon, others abandoning their pieces without firing a shot, and a brave band of 600 maintaining a conflict with the whole British army, being filled with chivalrous and patriotic sympathy for the valiant men who refused to run. He could not resist the strongest desire to share their perils, and he eagerly pushed to the front. Of his conduct, Gano said, My station in time of action I knew to be with the surgeons, but in this battle I somehow got in the front of the regiment, yet I durst not quit my place for fear of dampening the spirits of the soldiers or of bringing on myself the imputation of cowardice. You don't hear men talk like that today. Also during the Revolution, his friend General George Washington demanded the ordinance of immersion at his hands, to which he consented on April 19, 1783, when Washington pro proclaimed peace. He called upon his friend John Gano, who offered a prayer of thanksgiving to the Almighty Ruler of the world. He lived a, at a good old age, saw his prosperity multiplied around him, his country independent, happy, and the church for which he labored advancing, and thus he closed his eyes in peace, his heart expanding with the sublime hope of immortality and heavenly bliss. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, amen, placed by the Baptist Historical Preservation Society.